Okay, we're going to start in your spirals on page 27. I want you to get the objective down as an I can statement. I can solve one step equations with fractions. We're going to do a couple of examples. So let's write EX up here. And I want to start with example x minus 3 sevenths is equal to 5 sevenths. Just a reminder, when we're working with adding and subtracting fractions, we have to think about like denominators. This example does have like denominators, so we can now just look at it as an equation. And just like when we're adding and subtracting whole numbers or decimals, we want to look at the operation and do the opposite. So x minus 3 sevenths is a subtraction, so we're going to add the 3 sevenths. And because it's an equation, we do it to both sides. On the left side of our equation, we're left with x, and on the right side, we have 8 over 7. We can leave it as 8 over 7, or we can say x is equal to 1 and 1 seventh. Either of those is a correct answer. We're going to try an example where we don't have like denominators. 4 ninths plus r equals negative 1 half. We need to have the same denominator, so we're going to convert both of these to 18. To convert this one to 18, I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2. So I end up with 8 over 9, I'm sorry, 8 over 18 plus r equals, for this one we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 9 over 9. So I end up with 9 over 18. Now I can look at my 8 eighteenths and realize there's no negative sign in front of it, so I have to do the opposite. Right now it has an invisible plus, so I'm going to subtract 8 eighteenths from both sides of my equation. And I end up with r is equal to, remember if I've got a negative 9 and a negative 8, that's going to become negative 17 over 18. That cannot be reduced. So it is finished. Next, we're going to do some examples with multiplication and division. And reciprocals are important here. Remember, if I have a reciprocal of 2 thirds, it would be 3 over 2 because a reciprocal is the opposite of the first one so that when I multiply them together, I end up with a fraction that equals one. And that's important because we want that reciprocal to help us equal one and we can leave that one invisible. Because that's going to be going with our variable, and we want what's in front of the variable to be an invisible one. So let's start off with an example of 3 eighths x equals 1 fourth. We're looking for the reciprocal of the, the fraction with the variable, so we're going to do the reciprocal of 3 eighths, which is going to be 8 over 3. And if I do it to the left side, I also have to do it to the right side. 8 over 3 would become 24 over 24, because 8 times 3 is 24, and 3 times 8 is 24. That equals 1, which is what we want. That means on the left side we have our invisible 1 with our x, and on the right side we're going to do 1 times 8 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, and that can be reduced to 2 over 3. We're going to do one more example together where we have a whole number with the variable. 4y equals 8 ninths. 
This time when we're looking for the reciprocal, we're looking for the reciprocal of four, and four has its invisible one there, meaning that its reciprocal is going to be one over four. Remembering that all whole numbers have a invisible one underneath them, meaning four over one. So we do one times four is four, four times one is four, we make it an invisible one with the y. We do one times eight is eight. Nine times four is 36. I can reduce both of those by four. So I end up with two ninths. So y equals two ninths. Okay, so as you are doing your work today, remember if it's addition and subtraction, you're looking for like denominators, and then you're doing the opposite action based on the operation in the problem. And when you're multiplying and dividing, you're working with reciprocals, and you don't have to worry about denominators there, you're just trying to get the number in front of the variable to turn into an invisible one. Now let's get your binder paper ready. We really need to focus on correct headings so that your work gets scored correctly. Put your name, today's date, put the class period, and make sure you're putting it, we've now moved into 3-11. Here are the problems you're going to be working on to add to your contract. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the problems and put the due date. The contract is due tomorrow. Friday, December 18th. Don't forget to try to get a parent signature tonight for some extra credit. And of course, with the contract turned in, there is going to be a test tomorrow. But don't stress, it's going to be a partner test. I wish I didn't have to do it the Friday before break. I'd hope to do it today, but that's the way the schedule happened. Thank you to the SMI. So. If you need help with any of these, let me know during work time today.